Hello, hacksters! It is our first tech highlight in a while, and this is a very special edition. Um, well, okay, so uh, the next couple of days, I just have to tell you really quick, we are doing our Impact Summit. I'm inviting all of you to join us. It's going to be very exciting. Two days of free online virtual uh, events about sustainability, specifically relating to air and water preservation and conservation uh, with electronics. Very exciting. Um, but we have a little bit of a spookier theme for today. Uh, I've dug out a bunch of these circuit boards that I have from across the years. And I'd love to just highlight some of these since we're going into the spooky season, uh, which everyone loves. So let's get started. First up, uh, as always, you can find the links that I mentioned here in the description to this video. Just scroll down and take a look. I don't anticipate anything extra special coming up that's not on there. But uh, if you drop a comment down below, I will. Uh, there may be other cool ones to check out. So feel free to share the ones that you're most excited about yourselves as well. Okay, so first up, we have the Adafruit Hallow Wing, which is a wonderfully creepy board. I don't have one of their monster masks, but that's another really cool one. Both of them include these little uh, LCD screens, and this one has a LiPo battery integrated into it, and uh, it's basically like a feather wing, only it's got this TFT screen on it, and it's super cute. Uh, beautifully labeled as usual. It basically acts as a regular microcontroller and you've got some little analog capacitive touch pads down at the bottom. That's what those teeth are. It's very exciting. So let's actually take a close up look at this. Uh, it's this guy and I would love to show you it working, but unfortunately at some point I decided to do something to it, not sure what, uh, that borked it completely so it no longer boots. <laughs> but uh, you can see that there's these capacitive touch teeth down at the bottom. It's really cute. This has been out for a few years now. And you've got little jumpers on the side to connect to all kinds of different peripherals and stuff. So if you're looking for something to build with that uh, fits your spooky vibes for that day, go check out the Adafruit Hallow Wing. Um, as I mentioned, they have a monster mask as well, which I might pull up really quick. Here. Adafruit monster mask. Which is basically two of these um, stuck together with another cool design. And uh, look at it go! <laughs> Unfortunately, they're out of stock, but uh, they're very popular for things like making hats with uh, animatronic eyes inside of them. Adafruit also sells these plastic or glass domes that you can put on top of them, dome lenses, to really make them pop like eyes. Uh, these things are super cool. Uh, I did a, a video a few years ago, 2019, uh, trying to hook this up with chirp.io when that was a thing that was basically uh electronics communicating with each other via little cute r2d2 noises which sadly has gotten acqu acquired but well i mean happy for them they got acquired by sonos but sadly we can no longer really use them next up we have okay so we've got skulls now we've got to talk about monsters in uh specific the monster 6502 i don't have one of these they're very large quite expensive you have to put them together, but I do have a cool PCB business card uh, by those folks. It's a transistor scale replica of the MOS 6502 microprocessor. Uh, and so, of course, the name is kind of a play on that and also kind of a play on how large and redonkulous it is. So this is a collaboration between Evil Mad Scientist Labs, uh, Lenore Edmund and Wendell Oske, and... Uh, Eric Schlepfer, who does Tube Time. And we have some other cool links relating to that. So Tube Time is Eric's channel. Uh, this is not actually, I think, the main place to go for it. Probably go to Twitter. Um, and Evil Med Scientists are wonderful. And uh, Wendell Oske of uh, Evil Med Scientist and Eric of Tube Time have just released a book called Open Circuits, the Inner Beauty of Electronic Components. So a big thing that Eric does on Tube Time is slice electronics in half or into bits and uh, show you their inside, like cross sections of them. And so this book is kind of like a bunch of those put together. And it also kind of fits the, the theme of spooky circuits because uh, it's kind of Halloween-y, you know? Cutting things open, taking a look at their insides. Okay, next up, uh, I have a story uh, version of this that I've shared before on the blog, which you can see. But this is the cutest 
little circuit board with a doot on it. Little doot skeleton. Come on, focus. Ah! Okay, I'm going to have to force it to focus for you here because I really want you to see this thing. It is so cute. Mm, there we go. Yes. Look at that doot goodness. Uh, it's such a cute little skeleton. Ah! <laughs> and what this is is an ESP32 thing plus. Um, Sparkfun has a number of these ESP8266 things, ESP32 thing pluses, uh, assorted boards like that. That this one has a comes with an antenna, and it's just a little um, IoT board, Wi-Fi and BLE, as most ESP32s have. But this one was a special edition that they made with a little skeleton on it. So do do. And uh, there's a story behind this, which is that it says doot on here instead of boot, because back in the day when I was unboxing a micro mod kit from them uh, to announce their whole micro mod series, I had misread the silk screen, which was a little bit fuzzy. I'm going <laughs> to say that just as an excuse, but um, there's a link to it in the in the blog post here where you can see. <laughs> that it spawned a whole thing. So I thought it said doot instead of boot, and I got very excited about it. Someone posted eventually in the chat that it said boot actually, but uh, nonetheless, we all had a lot of fun with it, and now spark fun has come. <laughs> oh yeah, who was it that actually corrected me? It was Dave, I think. <sighs> anyway. You can see the offending button here. Look at that. Doesn't it say doot? Totally think it says doot. But uh, another is an actual one that is themed like that. And it looks like this and it's super cute. Okay. Next board. What do we got? Oh, the companion core. Okay. So one of mine. The companion core is now in its second iteration. So this is a board that I designed with a functional rib cage on it, uh, which I think is pretty spooky, skeletons and all that. It's got a little heart of gold, which you can see is sort of exposed through the solder mask there. This is done with Osh Park's After Dark colorway, which I just love, and we'll see more of that later. Um, this is the, the newest edition, which has some transistors on it and some improved uh, connectors for your headers and such. But it is a little bit more off, uh, off center, alas. Better documentation too, though, and you can see uh, it's sort of self-documenting. But what these basically serve as is to connect headers across the board, so that if you're, you know, you have all your uh, five volt and ground supplies over here, plus connectors to um, pins on your little microcontroller that you attach here. But then I didn't want to put those all of those on both sides of the boards. So instead, you have little headers if you want to connect something on this side to the 5 volt or ground lines. Then you just end up uh, using these as little jumpers connecting across the ribs with either a little piece of wire that you've cut off of something else or um, just you can blob solder across it as is. I've actually used one of these and it works OK. And then the new version has transistors, as I mentioned, but you can find that as a project on Hackster. If you have your own spooky boards that you've made, I would love to see them, especially if you publish them on the site so that we can all benefit from your knowledge. <laughs> doot is better than boot. Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody loves the doot board. So that's the companion core robot heart, and it does function as a heart for your little companion robot. Uh, if you choose to build one, it the whole point is to break out a microcontroller so that you can connect it to servos, NeoPixels, all kinds of different stuff like that. Uh, my per module and um, yeah, uh, the transistors are so that you can hook up DC stuff like motors, specifically vibration motors, or even regular DC motors for moving your robot around. Doo -doo. Lots of Frankenstein goodness here. Nick Pissarro. So the next one I want to show you is I, I put these tabs all in a specific order and didn't really uh, remember. I'm sort of learning along with you what order we're going in. <laughs> but this is a wonderful little touch responsive board made by Nick Pissarro. 
and uh, it's actually vibration responsive. So you can see we've got our little reverse mounted LEDs here behind the translucent FR4 or FR1 uh, PCB substrate. Uh, so here's your little vibration sensor. It's got a spring and probably like a little spring and a wire inside so that when you hit it, the LEDs light up. You've got a pin, you've got lanyard connections, and uh, it all runs off of this little CR12, CR1220 um, tiny battery. And since it, oh! <laughs> and since the the vibration sensor is just working as a switch here, it basically self regulates in terms of low power. It's always in low power mode. It only ever activates and uses energy when it's vibrating. So as long as you keep it in a drawer or something, it, that battery will last for a very long time, which I love about this. Nick has an amazing array of incredibly gorgeous different circuits, including these. Other skulls! Look at those! These aren't his only ones, though. You've got to see some of these in action. Is this one? Yes, flames. Show us the flames, Nick. Nick, show us the flames! There we go. Check that out. Is that spooky or what? Also, it's gold on black, which I love! And, um, yeah, Nick's stuff is just incredible. Um, this one is inspired by 2001 Space Odyssey. Pretty spooky, especially if you remember what part of the film that's from. And uh, yeah, he just all has all kinds of really beautiful different ones. Where's the ghost one, though? There's like a ghost skull in a frame that he made. Here we go. I don't have one of these, but I want to get one someday. So check that out. Ah, ghost skull shine through the PCBs or <laughs> LEDs. So good. Okay, so watching from Guyana. Hey, great to see people from here from all over the world. Jason Kuhn. Yeah, gotta have skulls. Twinkle Twinkie. Not only collects spores, molds, and fungus, apparently, but also makes some really cool PCBs, including this one so we've got the cheshire cat sao uh adult language warning just a moment uh this is a shitty add-on <laughs> so it's a an actual protocol created to enable people to make pcb art even if they're not super proficient uh circuit designers so here's a little holder that holds three different saos at a time and oh you're not lighting up and oh i always end up putting these one off. There we go. So here's our little Cheshire Cat spooky PCB. I think it's so cute. You lose a little bit of the uh, detail. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so Twinkle Twinkie is a very prof uh, not proficient, prolific maker of PCB art. And I just love this little Cheshire Cat one. It's so cute. I'll leave that on. Why not? No, it's going to interfere with the other videos. So, ah. What do we got next? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, from way back in 2017, uh, I did this video on unboxing a hacker box. And one of the things they had in there was a skull. I think this is supposed to take either a 555 timer or an at tiny 85 or something. Um, either way, it's got a little buzzer on it. I don't have the chip in there. This has been in our office for, you know, since 2017, so like five years now. And uh, it takes two batteries, which I'm sure those got cannibalized at some point, but it's pretty cute. So this came from Hacker Boxes. I think this is one of their general logos. It's pretty cute. The skull. And you can, you can watch that video if you want to take a, a journey to the past. Here's another one of mine, um, the Ouija ESP8266 programmer planchette. So if you're familiar with uh, Ouija boards, they have this. You put your little fingies on either side of this uh, with a friend, probably. You go on one side, they go on the other side, and it moves around this letter board and spells out messages from the beyond. This one is uh, crafted like this because it actually is a programmer for ESP8266 chips and um, modules, the ESP82601 module, more specifically, that has this eight pin pattern. So you basically stick the headers on here. Um, you put your board on there. 
It's like female headers on this board, uh, male headers on your ESP8266. Plug it in here, plug in an FTDI cable there, put a couple buttons here. Those serve as your program and reset buttons. And uh, then you're able to program your little ESP board with Arduino. So for obvious reasons, it's ESP. And uh, the ESP01 module is what you program with it. And then also it works as an earring. Because <laughs> you got to have spooky tech fashion. And you can find that, as with all of these, uh, in a link in the description below. Nick's work is great. Yeah, Nick Pissarro, so good. He shows up to a lot of maker events and uh, you know electronics engineering type things, DEF CON and such. So if you see him at one of those things, go say hi. He's got so many cool things and I'm sure that he'll be covered in blinkies that you can take a look at. Um, so where were we? <laughs> at the Ouija one, what's next? We've got the storm cloud soldering kit. This was the focus of a very recent video that I did um, by Alpenglow Industries. So I soldered this live on the air. We're being a little bit more lazy today and just doing a sort of compilation video, but I'm going to show you the finished result and show you it going. I like on this one how it uses these LEDs with built-in flashing circuits and they're not quite perfectly in sync. So you get this sort of like random lightning effect the longer you have it on and you'll see them kind of like sync up and go out of sync and stuff. Uh, very cute little board. I love this. From Alpenglow. What else have we got? Ah, oh, Drew Fustini. Okay, so Drew is at Osh Park. He's really cool. Um, huge fixture in, fixture in the community. And he likes to give out PCBs, uh, including some experiments he's made that play with the format of PCBs. So this is one, I believe it's a four layer PCB where you see that there's these translucent layers of fiberglass within which inside it are layers of solder masks. So that, that uh, open hardware logo there is actually embedded inside the PCB because you can see that there's fiberglass on either side of it. And then he's got copper, gold-coated, enid-coated copper on uh, each side of the outside here. So um, I think I remember him saying that this was a four-layer one. But the cool thing about this is that that fiberglass actually glows under ultraviolet light. It kind of has this green-blue radiance, which I think is pretty spooky and cool. Black lights are a fixture of Halloween. You're going to have some spooky PCBs. Actually, now I'm curious. What about these other ones? Oh, yeah, look at that! Totally glowing. We'll get to this one in a second. Any other ones with exposed? Obviously, this one isn't going to glow, although uh, maybe the clear sonar mask is a little bit reactive. What about this heart? Oh, yeah, there we go. Cool. Good times with the UV flashlight. Okay. What's next? So anyway, Drew made that really cool one. Oh yeah, next we have this pretty little moon made by Lee and Amy. Let's take a close up. This one I got from them at DEF CON. Uh, it's just a really pretty little moon. I think this is also from Osh Park, but it's in their sort of default purple color. Look at the texture on this with the craters and such. It's very simple, but also very gorgeous. And then you've just got these four LEDs on the outside. Let's see if I have a um, little battery that I can cram in here. Here are some tester batteries. We'll see if one of them works. Oh yeah, there we go. So it's a pretty simple, just lights up, but it's a bit ethereal. And yeah, they brought these to DEF CON a couple of years ago. Pretty. Which, of course, is sort of circuit board badge heaven. What's up next? <laughs> oh, I'm getting a, a hint from David. I mentioned this at the start of the stream, but for the next couple of days, we've got our Impact Summit happening which is a very exciting thing that's been eating my life, uh, which is our uh, two-day free virtual uh, conference. 
centered around air and water conservation technology. There's tons to learn. It's free, as I mentioned. It's online. Uh, you don't have to go anywhere. You just join us. There's this whole agenda. And since it's David giving the comment, I've got to shout out our Hangout and Nerd Out session that's happening tomorrow. Um, not this one, this one, uh, at noon Pacific. So we're going to be talking to Olya Erzak, Alvaro Prieto, and Ranak Singh. Totally cool people. Uh, Alvaro has been on the show before. Uh, the other two who not, but they're all really cool people doing super cool stuff with uh, air and water conservation technology. Olia is doing uh, methane capture detection and dispersal. Um, Alvaro is doing work at So Far Ocean Technology with Smart Boys. And Ranak is doing, I forget, but uh, you can check out more about them by clicking the link here, which goes to our article about it. Okay, tons of other cool stuff on here though. Uh, we've got lots of wonderful sponsors joining us and uh you can check out all the speakers down here as well eric pan from seed studio sarah maston from project 15 oh my gosh so many cool humans I, i'm not gonna go any further into that list because i know that i would accidentally spurn someone but uh yeah check out our cool partners so that's going on for the next couple of days totally free for you please come Oh, what, which one are you talking about? Is that the moon? I'll give you a second to respond. Because the last one that I talked about was our little moon from Leeborg and Amy. It is very pretty, isn't it? Do, 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 do. Simple, but beautiful. Simple and beautiful. Those aren't necessarily opposed. Okay, so next up. Ah, oh, yes, the Jewel Thief Cat. This was actually sent to me by David, whom I just uh, featured in the chat. Uh, this is gorgeous. It's by Tilda Industries, and it is a uh, another one that I soldered live on air somewhat recently. So you can go scroll down in the description to find the link to that one. And let's take a close-up look. It is so cute. And uh, <laughs> through a postal error, there is not a battery... Um, attached to this one, but check out the it's the cat on one side and it's a skeleton on the other side. How Halloweeny is that? It's very Halloweeny, that's what. Let's uh, show you how it works. Mm. One thing that I love about jewel thief circuits is that they basically allow you to run low power circuits off of supposedly dead batteries. So this is a battery that I took out of something else when it stopped working, but you can still run this cat off of it and it's gorgeous and you got a skeleton plus the uh ferrite toroid on there when it's wrapped up kind of looks like a little brain doesn't it inside of the zombie cat so this is by tilda industries again sent to me by david my good friend and uh speaking of which actually i also have made a little jewel thief circuit board which i've put into this candle holder which is a little bit spooky too and uh, I also think that the Jewel Thief circuit is kind of spooky on its own because it's sort of a zombie circuit. You take a zombie battery that seems to be dead and then you uh, are able to run stuff off of it. So this is an, an LED that's built into the board, but it's also running this LED tea light that I basically just cut the bottom or opened up the bottom, took out the existing battery and uh, soldered on to the wires that were already there, um, the battery connector. And now it's uh, it runs off of dead batteries. Very magical, a little bit spooky, and uh, a little bit zombie-ish. It's also printed in this recycled filament, so that's a little bit more undead as well. What else have we got? I didn't link the, uh, the jewel thief in the description, but you should go check it out. Ah, oh, yes, so stuff from the past. We've got creepy animatronics from Halloween, what year? 2019. Um, there's, there's so many weird, weird uh, Furby stuff that we've seen online. Um, but this one I love especially because it's a, it's on the site, it's by Ronnie Bandini, and it's a Furby turned into an analog of Jorge Luis Borges, who's one of my favorite authors and a little bit spooky as well. Magical realism, so good. 
And then we have costumes for robots, aka I was wanted to talk about this enclosures. But, oh no! This I wanted to talk about enclosures for electronics, and so uh, I figure that robotics enclosures are basically costumes for robots. Once you have a circuit, you can sort of dress it up any number of different ways, uh, modify it using Tinkercad, like I did in this video, and uh, end up dressing your robot up for different holidays. So uh, the rest of these links are just things that we've already looked at. Be sure to join the Impact Summit. Oh, I would love to assemble a cacophony. Morgan makes these really cool circuit boards, including a 3D uh, coffin-shaped badge, which is super cool and super spooky. Let me see if I can pull it up, actually. You're going to stare at my face for a moment while I pull this up. Cacophony, Morgan. Mm -hmm. Yes, here we go. To overview. <laughs> Batteries died. Do you have a plan for yours? Is this another jewel thief? I didn't if so, I didn't realize that. Ha ha ha. The sleek and elegant casket your batteries deserves. Ah. <laughs> wow. I've seen this in person. It is every bit as uh rave worthy as it looks on here. So you've got an ESP in there, and it's using a LiPo battery. Is it a jewel thief as well? Let's find out. I don't see a toroid inductor situation. But uh, I love this. It's just kind of highlighting your, your little battery on there. <laughs> um, it's worth noting that if you're lipo batter <laughs> batteries are actually dead aka if they're getting puffy please do not put them in your electronics um i looked this up recently what you're supposed to do is uh put a load a small load like a resistor or an led or a small lamp across the two contacts to make sure that it drains especially if it's a small one maybe something more hefty if you've got a big one but uh once it starts going puffy you want to connect a load across the the contacts to make sure that it drains fully and uh you can also put it in a bucket of sand to contain it in case it decides to do anything untoward, like suddenly catching fire or exploding. Uh, if you've never watched a video of a LiPo battery exploding slash burning, it's worth taking a look just to make sure that like you know what you're dealing with and you're motivated to take care of it properly. So once your LiPo batteries reach end of life, make sure to take care of them properly. Um, but also, before they're dead, you can put them in the cacophony and have a little rave coffin. I made a little, actually a little rave coffin project once a few years ago, but we don't need to go back to there. <laughs> anyway, totally, Morgan, I would love to assemble a cacophony. If anybody else in the comments has um, spooky PCBs to share, please do drop your link in the comments here and we'll feature it right here. I'm gonna wrap up here in a second, so you have a few moments left. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so a quick recap. Um, I want to show you a bunch of these again as we wrap up. Okay, so what did we look at? We looked at the hacker boxes skull. We looked at the ESP01 Ouija programmer slash earring that I made. <laughs> We've got the Halloween from Adafruit, which I borked a while ago, so this one is actually kind of dead. Um, oh, random little battery bag. We've got the Jewel Thief, which is a bit of a zombie circuit. Uh, another Jewel Thief, which is in the form of a cat with a skeleton on the back. So good. From Tilda Industries. We've got Nick Pissarro's Touch Responsive Heart. Boop, boop. So good. We've got the companion cores, which have rib cages and little golden hearts and serve as a heart for your companion bot. We've got the uh, wonderful Cheshire Cat from Twink Mr. Twinkle Twinkie, which you can, whom you can follow on Twitter or find on Hackaday, which lights up. Oh, let's plug it in again. Oh, I got it backwards. Woo. There we go. Excellent spookiness. Then we've got 
the angry storm cloud kit from Alpenglow. So cute! It's like the cutest little spooky PCB I've ever seen. The beautiful moon from Leeborg and Amy. All these links you can find in the description below. We've got a Monster 6502 reference. You've got to have monsters for Halloween. Super spooky. We've got the Doot Board from Spark Fun. And I linked to my article about the whole background here. It is so cool. Uh, it makes me so happy that that went as far as it did. We've got some cool UV reactive spooky PCBs here. Check out that glowing FR4 or FR1. I never remember which is which. But ooh. You too could make glowing PCBs with Oshpark. <laughs> Go head up, Drew. There's a couple more I didn't get to. Oh, oh yeah, Hackaday gives out a lot of these little badge kits. You gotta have, you gotta mention them when you got skulls. Love this little circuit board skull badge that they have. Um, what else we got? We got my little Ula um, reference to War of the Worlds, which I believe came out on Halloween uh, many, many years ago over the radio and people were terrified because they thought that there was an actual alien invasion. And so this is a little... Uh, just an LED slash battery tester board. Based on that, you've got a button, you've got a battery, you've got an LED connector, and a little switch or a resistor. What is that? Resistor. Um, you can use it as a little torch, but Ola is supposedly the noise that they made. And you've got your little ray gun. Everybody go listen to Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds because it's wonderful. And then finally, here's a ruler that I made. It's, it's a little bit spooky. Uh, PCB, which I haven't published anywhere, but it's based on some old book illustrations uh, called Quarrel's Emblems. And you've got a cool birdie and some lightning here in copper. And a spooky eye idol thingy with, like, wings. <laughs> okay, thank you for joining me on this adventure as we head into, as I mentioned, spooky season. Um, and also, as I mentioned, the next couple days are going to be our uh, impact summit and it's been eating my brain <laughs> but we'll be back you know with more regularly scheduled programming content uh, we've got our hackster cafe at lunchtime on wednesday we've got our hangout and nerd out session during lunch tomorrow uh, there's not necessarily lunch noted on there but it's understood that you just come join us for a chat with some cool guests and um yeah we'll see you soon with some more tech highlights and such like. Thank you for joining me and hack on.